Welcome back as we're still moving on rightly through our penultimate. Is that the word? Is it yeah, penultimate? penultimate? Yeah, penultimate, yeah. Uh, played out for Latin America. This is number four, and we're about halfway through the evening so far. Already today, we have seen uh, a very, very long match uh, actually go in favor of INTZ as they did take down Elevate. But like we've just seen, another very uh, scary prospect, MBR 7 owing. 7-0 against Team 1, but let's see if Team 1 can bounce it back as we're ready to go into our second map of this series. Yeah, and this is MIVR's map pick, so they should have a good idea how they want to play Consulate. They've just come fresh off the press from a 7-0. Let's see if they can close this out. They're up 1-0 in the series so far. If they can close out Consulate, they take the series and will eliminate Team 1, which would be a pretty big upset, all things considered. We'll see the Thatcher ban come out from Team 1, and the MIBR will ban out Capitao. I think Capitao is a good ban for MIBR here, not only because they start defense on Consulate, but also they didn't really use a whole lot of Capitao during their attacks on Coastline. And the one round that we did see uh, really from them, it or the only one attack that we did see from Team 1, it included a Capitao straight off yeah. the rip. So we know that's kind of an operator that they like to play with. And it makes sense, Capitao is extremely strong for the top stairs, uh, bomb site specifically if you think about the yellow stairs that's where cap attack really excel you think about in the little indent uh, in towards b that's also another great area that you can use with fire arrows and just a lot of general usage and if mibr know that that's kind of like a crutch that team one rely on then it is a comfortable ban uh, Thatcher gone mm, makes little sense to my understanding it's not my the first time, not the first time that we've seen a, uh, a Thatcher ban here. It, it just, it does nothing. Uh, I'm going to be real. I don't know why teams go for this. Literally, the only reason why you would ban Thatcher, that really, the only time that Thatcher's ever chosen is for a basement attack. And even at that, you can just take Piano, which most teams do anyway, and get rid of bandit charges or Kai charges that way. So it literally does nothing. I think, I think Thatcher's good to, like, take Maestro cams off the board, but Maestro is going to be banned out anyway. So it's not going to ban it too much yeah. there. And, and also, another Ooh. thing as well, is since we've seen Maestro be banned out, that leaves Echo up and Valkyrie. So I'm pretty sure IQ will be 100% pick rate at this game. If it isn't, then I worry for every team has not picked it. We're going to Archives and Tellers, first of all, from MIB. Yes, uh, I like this. Very nice pick. I like the Mute Mozzie combo coming up from them as well. We'll have a look how things are yeah, going to be moving be through. MIBR staying on the defense here on Consulate. So... Kind of confused because so Coastline was Team One's pick, uh -huh. and therefore MMBA gets to choose sides, and MMBA yeah. chose to start attack. Yeah, this is MIBR's pick, uh -huh. and Team One have opted to go on the attack first. Paranormal activity, you could say. It's something. It's definitely very spooky. You like the spooky? I want more, James! Give me give me less of the spooky and more, you know, more puns. We also bit a hollow echo as well. Oh, and that, that's the craziest thing you've, you've noticed, is it? <laughs> I just, anything you see, I just keep that's seeing the crazy things. one. I just keep seeing, I'm just, you know, tell as, tell as I see it, you know, it's like, uh, just weird stuff going on overall, so. We'll see Randall Bowen getting underway, and it's of course going to be that Archives and Tellers hold already. Look at the Kai you'd pick, though. That's an operator that, for me, doesn't scream I'm excellent in this bomb site. That's for a specific reason to Kai it off that main hatch that looks down in towards the, the visa from uh, the admin. The only thing is, you can eliminate that Kai charge simply from the window and visa. So I'm a little confused as to why they would bring it for that specific reason. Oh. Oh, they're in. Already, yeah, they're in. Rita and Lucid already getting kills on the board. Rita just, he just sprints all That's the way into sight. And that is Diffuser down bullet, taking him off the board very early on. What just happened? Why would you sprint so far deep? This is not looking good. Team 1 are just flooding into the bottom floor here, as Echo should be able to peek it all out. Bullet does get Lucid as well as Norvis picking up a kill of his own. And this is looking terrible for Team 1. What has just happened? They've fallen apart. Finally able to pick up the Kayad. However, as Falls moves in, through the Archives Corridor and trying to open it all up. But the Fuser is still down. Skidina does find one. It's all down to M King to try and bring this in, but with the hollow sight on the MP5, he brings down one. He knows where the fuser is, he knows where the other person is as well. Into Archive's corridor, he's going to go for the peak as well. 
has the Echo Drone still that he can try and utilize, or at least get in a position where his teammates can feed information. Flashbang gets tossed in, but to no avail. Skadina hold no. the angle. Will Fred the Needle. And Team One just about takes that first round. That was absolutely wild. Team One not messing about at all, just straight downstairs into Archives. Almost a complete disaster for them, but it will go well. I think the Thermite wanted to sprint deep in there. I think Redux wanted to plant really deep into the corner of Archives, but they just didn't have the control at all for that. Almost a complete throw from Team 1 there. Very, very close round. A good attempt from MIBR to try and go to an offsite first and try and throw everything off. But the Rikas, it's not really worked out for them. And uh, they're going to go to a cafeteria and garage defense. But it should also give a good idea to MIBR what the line was intending to be if they had gone to a default site. Um, you know, sometimes you have to take risks. Yeah. Uh, you know, you have to either try and make yourself stand out, try and do something different. You know, different is the kind of like new, new, isn't it? You know, different is like that new thing that you always want to try and go for. Uh, isn't that the saying? It's like different is the new, new, something like that. I've never heard that before in my life, Demo. It's but if not, you say like that's that. the saying, then that's the saying. We're going to move into round number two. MIBR are going to be opting to go downstairs to the cafeteria and garage first. Well, second of all. As uh, that archives, it was a good attempt. I think it was good and just to try and throw people off. But as I was saying, like it gives also a good amount of info to MIBR about Five what kind of lineup Team 1 is wanting to bring for a default site. Ready and should allow MIBR to bring it in. I figured out what it is. Go on. It is different is the new right. I've never heard that before. Yeah, different is the new right. That, that's the way it is, because you think about it. Anything you do that's different, people think it's wrong. Whereas in yeah. reality, difference is, is the new right. Well, think about it. Are you thinking? Uh, again, again, the Mute Multi combo is going to be coming out from MIBR. We do like a bit of that coming out. I think it's really good on Consulate as well, because not only that, like shutting down of info, but also you need a lot of info to regain that control over the uh, over the roam game and the flank game, which is is a big issue on Conjure. There's three staircases you can flank through. Looking at the setup from MIBR, they brought the mute, which I like to see, because you can place those mute jammers and elevate the positions, which denies droning in towards that mid floor, and it does assist Hugzord specifically. He's geared up and ready to stay inside of the bathroom. First blood comes in the form of bullet. That's the commando, and has picked off Skadina. So that mighty nomad that you mentioned, James, who can create a lot of havoc for many of the defenders trying to utilize those three staircases, is off the board straight off the rip. Even Cybers came to join him, so they're having a little bit of a, of a sleepover in the bathroom. Not sure I would want to sleep in a bathroom, but yeah, they are good. Nah, you strike me like a man who's had to do that on a, on a bit of a wild night out, James. I mean, sleep, passed out, is it really the same thing? Yep. But we'll see Jackal Tracking is going to go down into those buddies up into the bathroom. And you are right about those Mew Jammers as well. Yep. That is going to block out the drone and coming out into Anti-Chamber. This is really good stuff coming out from MIBR. And Team 1 have kind of slowed down entirely about what they want to do here. They've lost their Nomad. And they're going to drop down. Luke is going to try and recover his drone here as well into Anti-Chamber. They know there's people in here as well, and they just aren't able to clear them. But do they know Cyber's with him? That's the thing. They know that Mute's there. They have to find the Jaeger. And if those Mute Jammers are being scattered around, they will solely be looking for one man and one mine alone. As I say that, look at him. He finds Cyber nonetheless. As I think that was a quick peek around from him. There's still that man inside of the bathroom that they were ready for. And he somehow wins that where he really shouldn't have. And now when things were looking good for MIBR, the entire control has been given away. And Team 1, they have the upper hand. I think this is fine for him over here. They've wasted a huge amount of time in that top floor clear. And that has really just been the whole emphasis of the round. 30 seconds left on the clock. We've only just got the garage open as Ryze is going to move into yellow to see what he can do. He's been suppressed by the Echo as well and gets taken off the board. What a shot from M King as well as he finds another one. Just get the down. The diffuser is down as well. But Luke is going to move in. That's a triple kill on the round for him. It's all down to Novice and Bullet to try and bring this in. The drop comes through from Novice. He's got it. No, he doesn't have a C4 remaining. The revive just come through as well. They're all stacked outside of white. Bullet gets one. Novice gets another. And Bullet fits the double kill to finish it out for MIBR. Take round number two way better for them than first round. And team one wastes a huge amount of time to get that control. Already, this map is a lot closer. Those two rounds right down to the wire. Uh, MIBR, 
They look a little bit sketchy there at times. The fact that the man who was inside of bathroom didn't clean up house over the kills, like he's in a perfect position. Nobody wants to really push a shotgun in a close range environment. Kind of whiffs the shots there, but stuff like that does happen. But I think it kind of shows the idea and strategy that MIBR went for. I think that early kill really helps teams on kind of offsite holds. Straight away, you're at man disadvantage. You have to take time and rethink. Okay, he was supposed to be playing there. Now, how do we change things up? Mm. L lot, lot of thought process going into it, which, which I like to see from MIBR. And they're going to go for now a tellers, or not tellers, a lobby press rather than the top four. Yeah, it's kind Another of off site. They wouldn't. I mean, is it an off site? You could say it's an off site, I guess. Well, I, I call an off site not being the main two. I think it's interesting that they would go here, but I think mainly they're kind of playing off of the Capital ban. Because without Capital, it's kind of hard to push that front door area. I think Team 1 going to have to push Admin primarily for this. But, you know, you look at the top four as well. Capital is a massive operator for there yeah. also. Yeah. I would say more influential other than like this bomb site. Sure, he, he's good and all, but all it takes is your smokes. That's all you need. I wouldn't say the fire arrows have like a big thing to go for in this bomb site specifically compared to the top four. Well, um, for me, it's kind of like fire arrows into antechambers, making sure that no one can peek you out. And But yeah, you are right. Like, you do need that top four control. And, well, but also to me as well, MIBR should have a really good idea of what the lineup from Team 1 would be if they did expect that console take. And bringing the Habana and bringing the book is a massive indication of what Team 1 were planning to do. And it was that kind of admin Reloading. site take. So I actually oh, like the strategy from MIBR, like going to the off sites first and going to like kind of weird sites and trying to throw them off, but also getting that info onto Team 1 and keeping them guessing because Team 1 have changed up their strategy and changed up their lineups quite a lot. Yeah, they've been flickering through to try and see which one's the best. Uh, it looks like Team 1 are going to try and take from west side, so in through where the B windows would be initially and try and swing their what? way in, Wait, but they're, they're actually going for the piano take, the old but gold strategy, and it's worked for the moment, but they have managed to stop the plant via the Echo Drone. Skadina tries to peek on around and does get eliminated, and there's the refrags from MIBR. Hogsword appears out of nowhere, and the run out, you could have killed the man, repelling Cyber, go for it again. Look at though, he's drawn his attention towards that side of the map, and here comes Reduct, trying to find another alternative, another angle, look at oh. it from a different perspective, but still, Cyber wins that out. Lucid had since sank him off the rappel and pushing in for yellow. Yeah, it's all down to Lucid now, just about halfway over the round, and this is looking really bad for Team 1 right now as he runs through the smoke. They've got to know that Lucid's on yellow right now as he tries to push all the way up. Kind of giving his position away right now. We've got Echo Drones on the board, and they are going to be following as well. Lucid does manage to take it out, but it's all to do for him. It's a 1v3 to try and bring this in. This is looking horrible for him right now. But he's got plenty of time to work with. Doesn't have a huge amount of utility. Does have a breach charge if you wanted to try and bait this out. Potentially, default might not cam. be a good idea though. And uh, yeah, default cam is up. But Hugzord's still playing very, very nicely. And it doesn't like Lucid has any info whatsoever here. He has a suspicion that somebody's upstairs, and it is a correct one. He's literally cleared every corner apart the one that Smoke is in. And well, just a quick peek from MIBR. And that round was solely won down to an echo burst. And the thing that is the kind of irony is the man who was repelling on windows is IQ. was the IQ yeah. who didn't use her electronic scanner. That is unfortunate. That's a bitter, bitter pill to swallow. So we're going to move into round number four. Things looking pretty good for MIBR so far. They had one round where they slipped up on the Archives Tellers, but it was a 1v1. It was very, very, very close to the wire. But other than that, MIBR are still dominating this matchup. They're still looking very, very, very good so far. We see the mute pick going to be coming out here from a bullet. As we're finally, finally demo. We're going upstairs. About time. We went everywhere but here so far. Uh, and now for MIBR. They're looking in good shape. You think about the kind of structural layout that they went for in their defense. It's always kept Team 1 on their toes. It looks to me Team 1 are going to stick to the same lineup they did last time. So they've kind of game to like a pass and right? This is the lineup that we feel works with every single bomb site. Perhaps you're kind of, if there was the garage open, then you would kind of be fearing only bringing Habana. You'd want to probably bring a Fermite in that lineup. But I'm sure whenever they know garage will be up next after this. I think Fermite will come into the line of fire. Uh, other than that, you know, you like the clear out. You have 
Double flank watch, and even like even bringing the smokes, which I think is like a great substitute where you don't have that capital that we know Team One wants to play with. Everything looks good though in the lineup for Team One. MBR on the other hand, C4s, two of them, uh, and still that Echo, which has kind of been like the big main say that MBR brought every single round. Well, we'll have a look at how it's going to be going down exactly as we move into round number four. And we'll see Yokai drones are going to be deployed in heavy amounts. We'll see MOBR looking for a kind of heavy roam strategy, actually. Novice well, again on this attack. mozzie. He's been doing a pretty good job on it, honestly. And just, just playing this roam game as well. And consciously, it can be very, very devastating. It's very easy for you to stay mobile here. Oh, we see a bit of a very early take from Team 1 downstairs as well. They've got the book down there as well. Nomad's already going to go out. They're looking to try and get control of Yellow as well and work their way up. So a bit of an interesting take coming out from Team 1 so far. They do have the smokes up on the board, so they could definitely go for that constant side push. It looks like Luke could be joining up Yellow. Echo Drones just there, gaining that information. A bit of an annoyance though for Rise and throws in one of his track stingers. So that will be like the main area that they're probably gonna try and want to pressure to plant though. But it looks as if team one may be trying to switch up their attacks and go for the admin side instead. Skadini's downstairs by himself. Oh. No drones, no nothing. Oh. The bit of an early shot there by Bullet, just perhaps thinking that Skadina would walk straight on in as Falls came up to back him up as well. So this is a little bit risky from team one as there's two men down here. Shotgun primed and ready from Bullet, just edging ever God. so closer. This is such a risky play from Bullet, oh. but no, the edge up hits him. He's going to recover from it, though. They're not going to get punished for it just yet. M King kinks off things with the kill on Redux. Luki goes down as well as no, the shotgun whiff, but it should be a refrag from Novice. He's going to miss it, though. Fall's going to throw out a nade to make sure that he can't get pushed as Hugzor picks up Rise. And this is looking horrible for Team 1 right now. Skidina's trying to push all the way up. He does manage to find Hugzor and brings it into a 2v2. And Falls is just terrified right now as he's holding down the bathroom, but... Ooh, this is not looking good. MIBR looking to try and flank Cyber, moving up onto the Visa stairs slowly but surely. Doesn't seem like they know he's here right now. Novice has moved onto the diffuser and connected. Cyber creep back into the bomb site. Skadina in long death now being supported by the buck. Oh, and MIBR, another lockout round from them. And really, they are just just having the freedom to do whatever they want. And we really were not expecting this, James. And the way that they've went for every single bomb site just shows that they're they're just experimenting, having fresh, you know? This is just domination. Like, Team 1 have not looked like a team that could really actually bring in a win here at all. And they've only found one round out of this entire series so far. They, yep. they are 10-1 they are right now just in rounds. creeping it real. This is not what I expected at all, Demo. I don't think anyone expected no, this. No, no, no. Th th this was, like, set up to be Team 1 going in and just, you know, giving them Pumpkin to talk about. Well, this is definitely going to be a big upset if it does work through. But MIBR, for their next defense, their next trick, Attackers it's going to be to onto archives and tell us. I love the way we've got to the stage where you just, like, don't even, like, acknowledge the puns I've said so many no. tonight. You're it's just completely just keeping the straight face. We're moving past. <laughs> we should cast during Christmas. Do I, wanna, do I want to cast during Christmas Day? I'm not oh, really sure yes. about that one. Not Christmas Day, you maniac. Mm -hmm. bit, of a a tick. bit of a Boxing Day show match, maybe. Something like that. Oh, my. So. No, no, it has to be before Christmas. You can't do Christmas puns after Christmas, James. Day, Come on. It still works. You think I'm going to do a Christmas pun tomorrow? Or not a yeah, Christmas pun tomorrow? No, a Halloween pun tomorrow. I might do Christmas puns tomorrow. You never know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm one of those, James. What do you hear yeah. me start building out all the songs? So this time, Enkings brought the ACOG on Echo. It's a bit of a different change up in strategy. But overall, yep. they seem to be doing the kind of the same thing they were doing last time, although. Team 1 were insanely aggressive to take control of the garage and just go push straight through into archives. Yeah, last time he was below. And, well, because that hatch is open, he can go below if he wants to. Team 1, they struggled with this. They didn't really have a clear indication of where they wanted to push from. Sure, well, they won the round, I think, but it was so risky. I think they did. Like, they had some really good entry frags, but... The Caird playing that kind of surprise boil room angle completely shut down that early attack. And in the end, MIBR 
did almost bring it in for themselves, but Team 1, obviously, in that 1v1 situation, did bring it in. But things, overall, not looking good for Team 1 so far. We'll see early drone coming out there being a lot less aggressive than they were last time, but they're being careful to drone things out and push things as they come. Team 1 moving through into their fifth attack now. Not looking good series-wise. If they can't win this offsite, I don't see them bringing in the map at all. And there we go. First frag going into the favor of MIBR. So Hugsoff picks up his entry. Fall's going to go down and already the book off the board. That's a big pick. MIBR just, they've turned up the play, haven't they? They have, they're here, they're now, and Team 1 just cannot deal with it whatsoever. Novi's downstairs now. Him just playing this spiral staircase gives him that freedom to kind of flex between both bomb sites, kind of like in between. You could say he's like tethering on the upside down, couldn't you? You're really reaching with that one. You're really reaching with you that one. You get the reference, so that's all yeah, that matters, James. That's true. That's true. Well, MIBR still set up quite well to try and deal with this aggression coming out from Team 1 as they're getting set up on the Visa side push. Drone's going out ahead of them as Bullet is going to shut it down. What a shot from Bullet. Reader goes down. That's Diffuser with him as well as Bullet's still holding on. Last time he did it very, very well as Luca going to be pushing up very low HP now. Both of them, Nitro going to go out, but it's going to be Novice who picks up a kill onto Rise. It's all going to be down to Skidina and Luca to try and bring this in for them, but this is not looking good at all. As Luki tries to push up, Skidina goes down. It's all down to Lukid in a 1v5. Does find one into bullet. Finds two! Oh my god, what a flick from Lukid. That's two headshots from him as he moves up to try and secure some more kills. But no, Nitro isn't going to let him have it. As MIBR take round number five the first time they win the offsite. But this is looking beautiful for MIBR. You really could not ask for a better start, could you? Already five rounds in. You're sitting 4-1 up. Team one, we really have to question. I, it doesn't, for me, it doesn't look as if they ever have a clear indication of what they want to go for. They really need to get their, their heads together and just go straight in and think, okay, guys, this is what we're doing. Because right now, James, they're just running around like a bunch of headless horsemen. I, I don't know. It just seems like, like their, their early control and their early droning seems to be really well. They seem to be like, okay, this is how we want to take this. This is what we're going to do. And then their mid-round just falls apart so quickly. They're getting caught off guard. They're getting pushed, punished for overextending. Attack We're not seeing decent trades come out from them at all. I mean, it, it happened last map as well. We didn't see many trades come out from them at all. It seems like Team 1 are just playing too far apart from each other. And even when we see people playing right next to each other, it takes Lukid so long to trade that kill onto the Kayad. This is how you make a statement if you're MIBR. Whenever you know you're up against it, everybody, I'm sure, I'm sure if we look at even, you know, your, your great strafe app that everybody has installed, that make sure you go and do that. All the predictions are there, all the matches. Make sure you go and put in who you think will win what match. And you can, of course, gain points on the leaderboards and compete against all of your friends. I'm pretty sure most people put Team 1. Yeah, I mean, I think they're definitely the favorites going in here. I'd definitely be interested to see what the percentage but there's definitely, a, a, you know, an ability for, for Team 1 to bring this in so far. But MIBR definitely looking pretty dominant through the series. And it's not even like they're doing, like, really weird strats and throwing them off. The only thing they can think of that they're doing, like, kind of weird is the, the site pick choice. is like, being very, very off meta with the sites that they go to in what order. So, but we're going to be heading back downstairs for MIBR's final defense here. As Team 1 are going to be moving in from the opposite side and taking these mozzie drones and new jammers off the board. Lucan has a lot to do here as an IQ as well. There's a lot of stuff that he can remove off the board. Indeed. Uh, that's the whole point of having that IQ, is to eliminate Echo Drones. If there was a Valkyrie, which hasn't really been featured quite surprisingly from MIBR, but if they know that IQ is always going to be chosen by Luka, then what's the point of bringing another one just to make him even more powerful? Also, Jackal now being brought in. And there's the firmat that I was expecting uh, for the, the garage. You have to kind of bring that whenever you know that's like open for the defense to go for. Straight into the room hunt is where Team 1's headed to, and there will be Cyber lurking upstairs. And I wonder if he's going to try and have a big impact, because if he gets like another first blood, honestly, Team 1, they just struggle from there. Yeah, they definitely do. And the big struggle with this last time was just clearing out the bathroom area. They took so long. It was 30 seconds left on the clock, and they only just killed it. It was some good frags coming out from Lukid, but in the end, it just didn't work out for them. They had to everyone pile up on white, and it was just not going well at all. Some very aggressive Echo Drones coming out, and it's going to get punished immediately 
as Team 1 begin their clear. They've just got about halfway into the round and we've already lost both. Oh, no, we even. Oh. What? The Yokai drone gets away and he continues down benches. What is, what is going on? Yeah, I, I understand why they're prioritizing keeping the Echo drone there because you need to give Cyber some help whatsoever. He's in a really bad position and that just goes to show. He was way out in the open, an easy peek from Rise, but still a good damage trade off nonetheless. And here comes the Echo drone again. Oh still my doesn't eliminate God. it. And again, James, look at the time limit. Slowly ticking down, and Hogsword is still in bathroom. How is this Yokai drone still alive? That is what I'm questioning right now. MKing has done so well at just punishing these attackers and just buying loads of time as well. And as you say, we do still see Hugzod up in that bathroom, but Thermite Charges are going to go out onto the garage. He's going to be able to get it open. Novice getting way too aggressive. He's going to get punished for it on Yellow Stairs. He's going to take it off the board, and this is looking very good for Team 1 all of a sudden. And they have a lot of control, but Hugzod still holding a buff. That misplay, perhaps, from Novis could cost MIBR this round now. Hogsor does fire on through, and that has alleviated all upstairs pressure, and he can kind of push in for yellow and just stop this push in its tracks. The peak comes around. Oh, but no, Ryze wins that one out. No, this has to be around for Team 1. Unless that Echo Drone can come in, it's geared up and ready, but no, Team 1, they just go for the kills instead. And they finally get themselves another round. It's been a long time for them, but a 4-2 split is how it goes, and we get the side change. Yeah, definitely very winnable now for Team 1, and I think they're still the favorites, honestly, to bring, bring in this series. They had a very rough game on Coastline, but this is their opportunity to now bring it in. MIBR definitely come to play, but a 4-2 split, as you said, that's kind of what we expect here on, on uh, Consulate. It's not it's not terrible for either team. It's not good for either team, really. It's kind of just your middle ground. So we're going to be moving Team 1 onto the defense now, and they're going to go that cafeteria and garage defense. Not going for any kind of offsite immediately like MIBR did. As we'll see how MIBR want to take this on their attacks. And Attackers need to they had a flawless attack on Coastline. It was going so well for them. And their lion pushes were going great. Their drone thing was going great. Something tells me it's going to be a very different pacing from MIBR here on Consulate. Yeah, more than likely, uh, they know they have a big uphill battle against them. The defense in Consulate is very strong for Team 1 specifically, and I can't see them ramping up a fair few rounds. But MIBR, they have just been revitalized. You know, they have came back from underneath the crypt, they've, uh, they've awoken, and they have put a real show for us. And I wonder if they can keep it going, keep pushing through. And honestly, MIBR, it's here for the taking from them. They can pull off a real upset. I think a big morale boost for a team, which for the most part, they haven't had a lot of happy moments this season. No, they haven't. And you know, this would definitely be, even if they got relegated, it would definitely be a big upswing for them. Do hold on here, but we'll have a look how it is going to be going down as we move into round number seven. There's Redux actually going to go for a very early run out, but doesn't get punished for it just yet up on the balcony. So we are seeing the Valkyrie coming out from MIBR. Sorry, from uh, Team 1, but uh, you know MIBR didn't bring it at all. We kind of mentioned about how there's been an IQ every single round so far, and MIBR are going to be no strangers to that one. Cyber could be bringing that along, as MIBR are going to be going for a mostly a garage-centric push here, it looks like. MIBR are taking it slow. I imagine that they will try and take control of mid floor where there is some players of Team 1. So pretty much the exact same hole that MIBR did. And knowing MIBR, they, they should know the insides and outsides of this specific defense. Honestly, are they going to try and go for a quick rush? Because that is on the table. Reduct is right up against it beside the black car, but then quickly falls off. Those Valkyrie cameras. We didn't see Valkyrie at all from MIBR. Uh, but now this is kind of like powers up Cyber with his electronic scanner. You know, you're seeing the Echo Drone, you're seeing the black eyes. There's a lot of stuff now that really that IQ can do. Oh, oh, what a pick! Now that should just give them the entry. Th that smoke off the board, more importantly. That was such a nice pick coming out from Hugzard as he is. Yeah, as you said, the smoke, that's the entry gun, and that is looking very, very good. Yokai Drone's going to go down as well. I think there is one just on the white van as well, though. It's just go all the way in. Novice could be able to pick up an entry here, potentially. And there we go. Cyber could have picked it up instead. And the plant is starting to go down. There is absolutely nothing to stop it from going down here. As the peak comes out from the Echo, Novice is unable to pick it up just yet. However, the plant will go down. M King does find one. And this is looking much better for Team 1 to try and go for the retake. But 2v3, it's going to be 
all the battle to do. Falls, however, upstairs could be able to try and retake a little bit as Emkin goes down. Now a 2v2, however, very, very low HP on Team 1's remaining members. This is not looking good. Cyber and Hugzor still alive. Cyber deep in sight. Hugzor picks up Falls. It's all down to Skidina to try and bring it. He takes out the drone, but no, he'll get taken out himself. MIBR take round number 7 and a great start to their attacks. Wow, your Echo, you, you just see all of a sudden IQ just appear out of nowhere. Uh, tried to drag him down with him, but still. I, I don't know. I think if I'm the smoke in that situation, I think just jumped out of my chair and you got slammed so hard. Oh, oh my god. Spooky night, isn't it, James? It's so, oh, so scary. I'm still waiting for, like, the, just one pun, James. Just give us it. One pun. I had one. A better one. Okay. A more creative my one. My bad. Come on. You can do it. I know you have it in you. Well, we'll go into Renovate regardless, and we'll be going... To... Now, again, Team 1, I kind of, um... They're kind of cursed by this, I think, honestly, about this whole... They lose a site, and they immediately go somewhere else. They do not want to replicate things. They want to go somewhere else. They want to try something else. They want to do something different. They want to bring something Attack different. They're like, okay, that didn't work. As many bombs as they can. Team 1's response seems to be to losing rounds is we just got to do something else completely different. Rather than trying to uh -huh. work on the mistakes that they had already made, MIBR is punishing them very heavily for this gameplay style. MIBR are, are bringing like a very B tech setup. You know, you look at all the operators there. Nothing out of the ordinary. You need the buck, because soft destruction in this map is a massive thing. IQ is a bit of a given whenever Valkyrie and Echo is still on the table. Fermite, you need a hard breach for garage, or just you know, just in general. Bullet is there on Sophia, so you can try and open up some soft breaches. Those stuns as well always help in the end game. And there's the Rome jump out protection with the Nomad. So everything on MIBR makes sense. Whereas from Team One on their attacks, they were jumping all over the place. They didn't. They couldn't sit in one operator lineup for more than a round. Yeah, it's true. I, I think this is actually okay for a team like on coastline. MIBR could bring the same lineup every single round. It would be absolutely fine. The Thermite doesn't do much for you in this lineup now onto console office, and it seems like MIVR weren't prepared for a console office attack with their lineup. They kind of needed smokes in this lineup if they really wanted to do something, or at least maybe like a Barna or something like that, but they haven't brought anything like that. Well, whenever a console is a map like Bank, where every single bomb site is available and defendable for defenders, I just think that you always bring the exact same lineup, so you're always going to be prepared. Yeah, that's true. I think this is one of the... Um, one of the sites is kind of unique in the way that Thermite doesn't really do much for you here. Habana's more of the, the main fray. Yeah, definitely. So I think like, this, this could be good for Team 1 to just, like, go up here immediately to do that. But we'll see what MIBR wants to do here for their tank. They don't seem to be too committed to either side just yet. As drones are going to go out, they're going to have a quick look at the setup and the operators on the board. But they, they've been very plant-centric during their takes, especially on Cosine as well. Yeah, a lot more slow and steady wins the race uh, mentality. Not having the Capitao, though, is going to make pushing yellow that little bit oh. more difficult. And Bullet with the pistol eliminates Rai straight off the rip. That smoke gone. That's the man who was on yellow. And once again for Team 1, they've lost that first engagement. And I feel this is going to spiral out of control where they can't really pull it back. How did that happen? Did the smoke just peeked the hatch or something? Yeah, he peeked the window know. where oh, Sophia yeah. was. Not good at all. Yeah, well, peeked in towards bathroom. That was it. Well, there we go. Cyber picks up his own kill as well. Luca going to be going down. The yellow control is removed, however, by Skadina as Reduk finds one of his own. Now in two, now a three v three, but things are looking really good for him. Might be. They've got a lot of control right now. Bullet does have control of the bathroom as well. This is not looking good. I'm obviously going to shut down Reduk as well as we move into a 3v2. There's a bit of utility on the board, and there we go, a Nitro up on the board as well, as Falls takes Bullet off the board, but... What do you think about this? That reinforcement is saving this man's life right now, because nobody can wall bang him. Here comes a swing in, but you don't have that cover of connector, Hugzord. You made a risky play, and somehow it's paid off. Novi's eliminates the Echo, so there is no denial. Oh. It's just down to Falls. He frags straight onto the head of Novi's, and now one versus one. Who will win? Hogsord versus Falls. Shots rattle back and forth, but still control off the bomb site. Hogsord has it. Barely missing away. Oh, oh and Falls. He clutches up for his team and Team 1. Now they have something to be happy about. <laughs> so close. Is Falls went for the wall bank. I guess it was like a really miscommunication because they were actually pinging where that plant was going down. Falls 
little mistake there at the end, but was able to bring it in nonetheless. Team 1 finding their first defense here. This is looking much, much better for them. MIBR all of a sudden falling a little bit short there, and this is looking like a bit more of a game here, Demo, as we go to a lobby press room defense now for Team 1. Yep, just falling a little bit short, just like Doki. Um... You, had the, you wow. set me up for it. How could wow. you not? Any, any. If there is any talk of small, short, or tiny, Doki will get roasted. So fortunate. Well, it's going to be a Valkyrie onto the Alibi instead. I'm glad that we see no Valkyrie anymore from Team One because I don't think it was doing too much for them. And there's been an IQ on the board every single round from MABR, and we kind of theorized that that's why MABR wasn't bringing their Valkyries either. Yeah, that, that's like a big thing because IQ far. then gets kind of double the effect. Being yep. able to eliminate the Valkyrie cameras along with the, the Echo, it just doesn't make sense. And whenever like the gadgets are like so easy to get rid of as an IQ, it doesn't really do much. But anywho, we move in now for Team 1. Not going for Garage though. Instead going for the Lobby. Upstairs hold from them. Wonder if MIBR will try and go for like a similar thing that Team One went for, which was like the piano kind of swing in under the cover of smoke and try and get yeah. the plant down as quick as she can, which was really unique. It's just the IQ didn't eliminate the Echo Drone. Her sole job to eliminate those. I don't know. It was really weird and, and kind of I don't know funny. The irony in it. It, it uh, looked like that that was gonna work if the Echo it, it Drone was, wasn't. It was. It was 100 percent yeah. gonna work. But now for MIBR, I feel as if they will be going for like the fight in the top four, it feels if they're more of that team. Uh, yeah, I mean, they have a lot of such attrition in the form of the book and the Zofia as well, and I'm hoping IQ has breach charges as well. So as we move into round number nine, we'll have a look at like exactly how this is going to be going down and how we're moving through. MIBR still looking very, very good indeed with five rounds to three. It's been slightly less dominant from them in the later rounds, but... You know, Team 1 still looking, uh, still looking in the fight so far. As uh, looks like Team 1 kind of a very, very spread out roam yet again. I feel like that this was kind of their mistake on coastline. See how they now move on in. And Team 1, they have a double roam game from below. And... I kind of question why they would leave Falls and Skadina by themselves. You want to... Oh, okay, that's probably why. They just run out and they kill Novice. So that's butt gone. That's nades off the table. That vertical control that certainly Emma Bar could have went for. And Bullet does respond, though, but straight away back into control for Team 1. They're going to go for the weird piano take that we did touch upon. Let's see if an Echo Drone is here to try and save the day. Oh, they've just swung in as well towards Bathroom. Nobody's in sight because he did eliminate the Echo. And now for Emma Bar... They should just be solid. They can hold this for days, and the defenders, all of a sudden, they're the attackers. Oh, this is not looking good for Bullet. Almost whiffing those shots, but Cyber from the front door will eliminate and help him out there. Hugso should be able to go for a plant here sooner rather than later. However, they've got control of the site. Bullet finds another one. This is looking horrible for Team 1 right now, as they have no plant denial available to themselves. They could have gone below. Redo could have done something about that. Doesn't like they have too much info on what's going on. Fall's going to rotate through the lobby instead. This is looking not good for Team 1. As you said, the defenders become attackers as they try and go for these retakes right now. And they're running out of time. The defuser is slowly doing its work. And this is a horrible place to try and retake as Hugzard will punish Falls for that and show him exactly what happens there. He will drop down the counter hatch, but not going to be good at all as MIBR put themselves on match and series point. You have a copious amount of soft destruction on the defense, Team 1. Why is, first of all, the holes not being made to stop that push specifically? Why on earth is the hatch not open? Why was that not opened as soon as you lost your echo? As soon as you knew that they were repelling on the windows, why was that hatch not just there open, putting pressure on Fermat? He couldn't plant. No sense whatsoever. They have just played you at their own game. Well, I think um, the majority of that, like, they wanted to play that from below, and they wanted to try and nitro the guy if he went into go for that plant, but they lost their echo drone. And after that, they had no info on what was going on piano at all. Yeah. They tried to retake from lobby instead. And then you have the, the mozzie trying to push up yellow instead from that way. But just a little bit missed time from team one there for their coordination. And like a really good aggressive shutdown from LFAR to gain that control, especially that the Zofia repelling into anti. That was a really good play coming up from him, like realizing what was going on there and then also coordinating with his team. It's like, honestly, I feel like 
Lucid especially, but a lot of members of Team 1 have been winning a lot of gunfights here. Like, Lucid's been doing a really good job of on his entry. But MIBR have had great entry on their own, from Novice especially, as well as Cyber. Also, just great coordination, communication, and droning. Droning has been great from MIBR. They've had so much yes. info what's going on in the site. One of, like, the only Latin America teams who have used the drones. Out of all of them, like, even Liquid. Liquid just, like, r speed run. That, that's what they have basically set themselves out for. Wouldn't be surprised, going uh, up against INTZ, that they would also speed run that as well. Like, Liquid are... If Liquid don't make this LAN event, I uh, just... I give up. I really do. You just give up. I give up. Well, we see a similar hole coming up from Team 1 to what MIBR did here. Let's see if Team 1 can make it a little bit more successful. So I'm going to be opening up the piano windows on Titan's chamber as well. I wonder how MIBR want to take this. This is like really weird from MIBR because they have this like really aggressive echo drone all about the place. And it looks like Team 1 are kind of doing something similar here. Yeah, they're kind of very similar, I think, from both teams, the kind of play styles. And you said, James, new guard versus the old guard. Yeah. Uh, don't tell me they're going to try and walk in. Novice is on the Twitch. You already know you press that panic button. There's no way Novice actually gets it. He's going to do it. He's yeah, going to walk in. I know he is. The classic crouch yeah, look, walking look at him. Twitch. No, he's go. actually just standing. So I have a crouch walk. Yeah, they're all in right now. They're Bullet, just you made too much to noise. No. Very easily push this side. They're going to be expecting this. However, it looks like his bullet is going to put a claymore down, and they're going to try and push through security hole. There's an echo drone as well that did spot them. But MMBR should have a lot of control already very early on with the backside take. Oh, this is going to be uh, explosive. Uh, definitely, it's going to be a bit of a wild ride now as Team 1, they have called on. All of MIBR are on the back and they should just start stacking up. So it's definitely going to be a case, James, off. Spears will be splintered and shields will be shattered as they try and walk on in. They catch the smoke. No, doesn't even catch the smoke. Cyber, you missed that one. You know exactly where he is, though. But still, trades have come out. And Team 1, they get the better off. Hugs were trying to at least equalize it. There's smoke gone. Oh, but across the way, the smoke. Another one for Team 1 as well. The shotgun's reign supreme. And that entire backside push has ended in misery for MIBR. Yeah, it's all down to M King to try and bring this in. It's a 1v3 clutch situation for him to try and bring it in. He should be able to recover the diffuser and he's going to be able to do so successfully. But yeah, very limited utility in just one flashbang remaining. It looks like he's going to try and rotate and go to a yellow push instead. He's actually got plenty of time to work with here as well. And I think this is very clutchable for him, but it's going to be an uphill battle as well. Bathroom's actually been completely abandoned as well by Team 1. So he could sneak his way in here and do some work from the hatch. But it doesn't look like Team 1 are going to give him too much room to maneuver. 30 seconds left to go on the clock. And M King slowly making his way up and downtown. Looks like he's going to be able to do too much from the hatch. He's going to go back down spiral instead. Sprinting all the way. Giving away his position a little bit as well. As he goes for the free fire. Sees one on pipes. Oh, he takes him down. M King gets one. He's got to find two more. If he wants to bring this in, Flashbang does go out. He's going to try and push through this kitchen door. Going to go for this pre-fire. He's desperate to find any kind of kill that he can. He's got another someone's playing close, but the shotgun will end his life. As Team 1 take round number 10. And uh, yeah, a little bit more better from them. They should actually be able to bring this into overtime if they play their cards right. Yeah, just don't go for back pushes. They don't work. They really don't. Um, it's too clumped up. It's too messy, I feel, for my liking. And Team 1... They do get a bit of a get out of jail free card, I think. Basically, the MIBR, they handed them that. And quite possibly, I think the worst thing that Team 1 could do is go to the Tellers bomb site. I, I just, I don't know, whenever your top floor is sitting open right there, why you wouldn't go for it. it. Makes no sense to me. You go for the for the off-site one that you haven't went for. It's so risky. It really is. But hey, if they want to go for the risk, they go for it. I mean, it works for MIBR. Yeah, sure, but MIBR did fail on their first try. It took MIBR two times to actually get it right. Yeah, that, that is true, I suppose, but we'll have a look at how this is going to go down. I'm quite interested in the setup from Team 1 here, but we do see a Legion and a Valkyrie making their way into the lineup. I really thought they'd bring a Cade here, because we saw the Cade actually be quite effective from MIBR when they went downstairs defense here. We do see that reinforcement on the hatch onto Admin go down as well. 
Team 1 took this very aggressively from Garage, so like with MIB in his lineup, that could also be a good take from them. Because a lot of the reinforcements, a lot of the utility really just goes up into admin, really. Inside. Okay. Still, match point, series point for MIBR. They could try and book their way into the semifinals. And they will, of course, face whoever wins in our next series, which is still to come. Guardians taking on another Pro League team, Black Dragons, who they looked all right, I thought, in their series, a team which I'm looking forward to seeing a lot more of. You know, I kind of look at Black Dragons like a collection of, like, a lot of the old teams in Pro League, like, way back in, like, year two. Like, yeah, you know, there's a lot of collections of, like, you know, phase members and, and NIP members. Bit of a weird concept, but it works well for them. They actually had a really good season as Novi's just barely misses out on the first blood there. And, okay, he's just going. Novi's doesn't care. He, he, just, he has a machete and he's going swinging. Yeah, this is a, exactly the same kind of like, aggressive take that Team 1 did during their attacks of where you push Garage, you get this a lot of control here, you get a lot of cutoffs going through into archives, and you should be able to get in here and do a lot of damage. Indeed, Zemabia are slowly creeping their way through. Bullet leading the charge here, as that bottom spiral cam will be eliminated. Almost Bullet catching one off guard, but not able to do so just yet. We see that Legion still playing deep into sight. Gideon trying to make his way work, but it's going to be Bully who does pick him up for free. That's the Legion down. That's the first pick going to MIBR's favor. Look at Nobby's in a great position in towards the Black Closet. Does get a Legion Man stuck in him, but quickly pulls that out. There is, however, a down though on the Cyber, and Redux even fires through with a C4. Oh, and even Novi's, he also gets lit up to know exactly where Valkyrie oh. is. What a great pick from Hogsword. And Novi's is still trying to hunt. He's trying to go for the pickup and instead plants the Diffuser. Oh no, they've lost Novi's. The cover coming in from Rise. The quick swing around from Hogsword to try and hunt in towards the more players that are still lurking towards the downstairs. And they've kind of switched sides. This is a good plant from Hugzard though, like a good plant spot to come down, but he's gonna have to play his cards very, very safe indeed. Gotta watch for the drop down as well, as it may just come down from Luke, and he does go down, but he goes down with it as well. And Cyber and Hugzard both find kills of their own. It's all gonna be down to falls to make it work, but no, MIBR will lock it out and take down falls, and that's gonna be GG well played, as MIBR will knock out this bracket's favors of Team 1. How does that happen, Demo? Do you know how that happens? They played the better Siege. And I just think overall, MIBR, they, they really, really woke up this game. They needed something like this, I feel, to kind of get them back on the rails. Because for a long time, MIBR were looking really weak. You know, we were really questioning about this team. You know, they, yeah. they made a roster change previously as well. Hogsword coming in, I feel as if it was like the correct decision. It kind of gives them a little bit more stability as being a very hard anchor. And he got a good number of diffuses down there as well. That's what you expect from your Fermite. Yeah, yeah, he, he just did all the work. Hooks yeah. are really just the goat here, here I guess. But we're going to throw it to a quick break, but we'll be back with our final quarterfinal of the day. It's going to be Black Dragons who take on Guardians. We'll be right back.
Predict the outcome, win the game. Get live coverage and schedules for your favorite tournaments. Analyze, predict, and vote to gain points. Compete with other esports fans and climb the leaderboards. Straight, everything esports. Download now on iOS and Android.